The Candy Maker's Gift, A Legend of the Candy Cane by Helen Heidel, illustrated by David Heidel. Long ago, on a cold, wintry morning, a warm light glowed in the windows of a candy shop. The old candy maker shuffled to the front door and hung an open sign in the window. He put on his apron, then added a log to the fire in the pot-bellied stove. All the while he smiled, thinking about his seven-year-old granddaughter. What can I give my Katie girl for Christmas? He wondered. I'd like to surprise her with a special gift. After he unpacked a wooden chest that had held a hand-carved nativity set, he carefully arranged the figures in his store window. The candy maker bustled about, cheerfully refilling candy jars with mints, butterscotch drops, jelly beans, and candy sticks. He chuckled as he thought about Katie and the village children. He knew all the children by name and their favorite candies. Looking over his list of Christmas orders, the old man marked an X beside the names of families with children. I'll slip in an extra bag of candy for them, he said to himself. I wish I could see the children's faces when they find the candy surprise I've sent. Humming a Christmas carol, he opened the cupboard and took out an assortment of sugar, flavoring, sacks, and ribbons. Suddenly, the doorbells jingled and a blast of wind and snow blew into the shop. To the old man's delight, a group of children scurried in like a flock of little birds. Laughing and talking, the children crowded around the candy case. Joey, the youngest, pressed his worn mittens against the glass. The old man smiled at him and thought, Times are hard since his father died. Everyone except Joey laid their coins on the counter and picked out their treats. The candy maker chatted while he packed the candy in small bags and tied them with ribbon. I can't wait to decorate, Ben said. But little Sarah interrupted, I can't wait to see the china doll I get for Christmas. The other girls were silent. Kara and Marianne will probably receive only one small present, thought the candy maker. Chung piped up excitedly, Our school party is on Friday. The candy maker laughed, Chung, you always love to have fun. Oh, time for school, said Ben, hearing the clock chime. The candy maker quickly passed out the sacks, then handed a special bag to Joey, whose eyes lit up as he reached for the gift. Thank you. Merry Christmas, called the children as they scrambled out the door. Watching from the window, the old man glanced at the manger set. He remembered watching his father carve it many years ago. I hope the children won't miss the real gift of Christmas, he thought. Walking to the back of his shop, he knelt by a chair. Dear Lord, he prayed, you love these children more than I do. How can I help them know your gift of Christmas? Show me how I can bless them. Gripping the chair, the candy maker pulled himself up and wiped a tear from his eyes. He took down the old iron kettle, measured sugar and syrup into the pot, then lit the kitchen stove. Patiently, he stirred the candy mix, waiting for it to boil. When the syrup began to bubble, a smile brightened his face. Maybe that's what I can do. I'll try making a new candy for Katie and all the children, a candy that tells about Christmas. What flavor should it be, he wondered. I know that Katie likes peppermint. 
Picking up a small bottle, he carefully added three drops to the pot. Mmm, he said, smelling the minty aroma. This reminds me of the spices given by the wise men to baby Jesus. I want this candy to be white, said the old man, because Jesus is the Holy Son of God. And it should be hard candy, because Jesus is like a solid rock, always there when I need him. The candy maker poured the thick golden syrup into a bowl to cool. He looked around his shop, wondering how this candy could be different from ordinary candy sticks. Greasing his hands with butter, he took the sticky glob from the bowl and began stretching it. The more he pulled, the smoother and whiter it became. But he felt discouraged. I just can't think of anything new. Show me what to do, Lord, he prayed. His gaze fell upon the nativity set, and an idea flashed in his mind. He quickly rolled the candy into the shape of a long rope. Then he cut a shorter piece and curved one end. He held up the finished stick and said, What will Katie and the children think? The doorbells jingled again, and a familiar voice interrupted the candy maker's thoughts. Hi, Grandpa, I'm here. A girl with bouncing curls skipped across the room. The old man laid down his candy stick and hugged her. Katie, how's my favorite granddaughter? The rosy-cheeked girl laughed. I'm your only granddaughter. Katie's eyes widened when she spotted the candy stick. What are you making, Grandpa? It's a funny shape. The candy maker sat down to watch her. What do you think it is? He wrinkled his brows, waiting for her answer. She grinned while she turned the stick sideways and around. I know, it's a cane, like the one you take on your walks. The old man laughed. It does look like my cane when you hold it that way. Katie pointed to the nativity set. That shepherd has a cane too. You're right, he said. It's called a staff. Shepherds use the staff to comfort their sheep, guide them on the right path, and keep them out of trouble. He smiled and added, Go ahead and taste it. While Katie licked the sweet stick, he continued, This staff reminds us of Jesus, our good shepherd. A good shepherd will do anything to save his sheep even give his life. The candy maker cut another candy stick and curved the end. How can I explain everything? He wondered. Turning the stick upside down, he asked his granddaughter, Now what do you see? Katie's eyes sparkled. It's the letter J. Why did you make a J? He smiled because we celebrate Jesus' birthday at Christmas. This candy J is my special Christmas gift for you. Thank you, Grandpa. It tastes yummy and smells good, too. She paused, looking at the candy. But it's kind of plain. Could you make it pretty? He chuckled. You're right. It does look plain. He opened a cupboard full of small jars. I wanted it to be white because Jesus is holy and sinless, but I can try adding some color. Use red, said Katie. I like red for Christmas. He took a jar from the shelf and a small paintbrush from the drawer. What does red make you think of? he asked. Katie watched her grandfather dip his brush into the food coloring. Red makes me think of hearts and love, she said. Ah, you're helping me, dear girl. He carefully painted a swirl of red around the white stick. When he finished the long stripe, he paused. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Oh, Katie, never forget that first gift of Christmas. 
Was baby Jesus the first Christmas gift? She asked. Yes, Jesus was God's gift of love to the whole world. This red stripe can remind us of God's love. He spoke in a softer voice as he began painting another line. Red also makes me think of the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. It makes me sad that Jesus died, said Katie quietly. It is sad, but it's the way Jesus proved his love for us. When you taste the sweet candy, think about his sweet love. And remember, Jesus came out of the grave and lives with us today. Katie smiled and nodded. Someday we'll live with Jesus in heaven, just like Grandma. Yes, we will, forever and ever and ever. Heaven is God's gift that never ends. The old man's eyes glistened as he handed her the finished candy stick. Watch how you hold it. It's still wet. The elderly shopkeeper leaned back in his chair. Well, what do you think of it, Katie girl? I like it, Grandpa. Can you make some more for all my friends? Yes, and we can work together. After I cut each stick, you can curve one end. Then you can try painting the stripes. This is going to be fun, said Katie, jumping up and down. Tears of joy filled the candy maker's eyes. Silently he prayed, Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayers, and thank you for Katie. The old man smiled at his granddaughter. Katie, dear, you were part of God's answer to my prayers. I wanted to give you a special gift, but you gave something to me. You helped me make a candy that tells the meaning of Christmas. Oh, Grandpa, I'm glad I could help you. Katie threw her arms around his neck and hugged him tightly. Let's thank God for helping both of us, he said. They knelt and prayed that this candy gift would be a reminder of God's perfect gift of love, Jesus, and that through it many would learn the true meaning of Christmas. Snow fell quietly, blanketing the little store, while the warmth of the wood stove and the sweet smell of candy filled the workshop. The candy maker knew that he and Katie would always remember this day. They never dreamed this sweet gift would become part of Christmas tradition around the world. Today we call it the Candy Cane. The End Thanks for the story, Dad. You're welcome, Karis. If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe.